Yes, people, what's going on, man? We're back with another review. Chelsea 1, Real Madrid 2, man. Last game in America, and thank God for that, honestly. These tours in America, bro, they just give me serious PTSD, man, from what happened last year over in Cuckoo. These pitches, bro. I don't want to talk about it again, because they you, you don't know how much it pisses me off. You know what I'm saying? But make sure that you smash up the likes, as always. Make sure that you're leaving your comments in, in below. Uh, let me know what you think about my thoughts. Let me know what you think about the game as well. Any concerns that you've got, you know, any positives you could you could take out from the game as well. Um, and yeah, let's let's get straight into it, people, man. Because listen, there's still a few problems in the team that we were seeing last season in terms of the defense and in terms of the the quality in the final third as well. You know what I'm saying? You know. I didn't really look at anything yesterday that, and I'm looking at it and I'm thinking I've learned something new because these are problems that we know we have at the moment. You know what I'm trying to say? On the par, our defence was really good. But then it's our attack, which was shit. Yeah, we didn't even score 40 goals that season. And then last season with Poch, we scored a lot of goals, you know, thanks to Cole Palmer and that. He helped a lot in that as well, him and Jackson. Scored a lot of goals, right? But the defending was shocking last season. Shocking. And what I said when, when Mareska came in, I said Mareska's got a big job on his hands because he needs to find the balance between scoring a lot of goals again and at the same time helping the team, you know, stay compact defensively because there's way too many holes in our team last season. Way too much space. Yeah, Poch's Island. We had Caicedo playing on Poch's Island last season, you know. First few games against Wrexham, against Celtic, massive hole in that midfield. On a transition, we're just getting done. We're just getting done. You know, and then against um, uh, Club America, we saw a big difference. You know, we looked a lot more assured off the ball and on the ball. We were clinical. We won that game 3-0. You know what I'm trying to say? Then the same problems happened the following game. But obviously in that game, to be fair, like he, he changed the lineup and that, you know, he was playing people out of position. It was it sort of trial and error sort of situation. You know what I'm trying to say? So I'm not seeing, I'm not expecting perfection in preseason. The main thing for me in preseason is I want to see what the new coach is doing. I want to see what the new players can offer. I want to see that there's something be, being implemented, you know? And there definitely is something being implemented because on the ball, I can't lie, first few minutes, Bad Issue and Colwell, they were playing some nice passes into the midfield. You know what I'm saying? I'm seeing Enzo getting on the ball. He was he was, he was was good on the ball, to be fair. Like, he was playing it in behind to Sterling. He was finding those passes, those long-range passes, just dictating the game. Um, he looked a lot more comfortable in that left half space because the difference is when you're playing that left half space and you're right-footed, you can cut in and just whip it on your right. Whereas when he was in the right half space, it's the angles are completely different. So he can still whip it, but the whip's not the same. You know, that's why you get a lot of right-footed um, wingers like to play on the left. Because when they just cut in on from the left, they can just finesse it on the right. And same thing as, as right wingers. More time, you want a left-footed player on that side so he can just whip it in on his left. Do you know what I'm saying? So that's why it was a little bit easier for Enzo. And that's why you saw a difference in his game. I still prefer him deeper. But to be fair, yesterday, he was one of our better players because there wasn't that many good performances. You know, Gusto, I thought he was good as well on the ball, um, especially in the second half, defensively one-on-one. -on -one, he was very good. But back to the defence again. Back to the defence again. That left-hand side, yeah, of, of Real Madrid, Vinicius was just taking the piss. Vinicius was <laughs> was taking the piss. He was, listen, Rich James did win this battle yesterday. He probably won, he won the battle in the second half, to be fair. He'd done better in the second half. But in the first half, listen, he was looking shaky. Looking shaky. They kept finding passes in behind on that side and the warning signs were there. You know what I'm trying to say? And for their first goal, the line was so high and everyone's awareness was so bad. I'm seeing Reese running into the midfield, pressing God knows who. You know, Colwell ball watching, gets played in behind and now it's Baddy Shaw all by himself trying to defend against Rodrigo and these sort of guys. It's peak. And then before you know it, they play it to the right-hand side, they score that first goal. And I could see that happening. I could honestly visualise that goal going in before it even went in because I could see how bad the position was. I could see how high the line was, you know. Cole was not the quickest centre-back and neither is Badia Shield. So I don't understand why the line was so high because these guys are not that quick. They're be they're good on the ball, you know, and they're, and they're decent at reading the game at times. But overall, they are not that quick to be playing such a high line and having such bad awareness as well. You know what I'm trying to say? And this goes back from last season because last season we didn't even know what our best pairing was because we had a lot of centre-backs injured. We had Poch playing Levi Colwell at left-back. You know, you had people 
he chop constantly chopping and changing. And one thing about centre backs, you can't chop and change that position, bro. That's the that's the spine. Yeah. Arsenal, Gabriel and Saliba every single week. Spurs, you see um Van de Ven and um what do you call it? Romero. You know what I'm saying? Man City, Diaz and Ake more time. You know what I'm saying? All these teams always have the same pairing at the back because the centre backs need to be able to understand each other. They need to be on the same wavelength. They need to be in the same line. So when one of them presses, the other one knows where to position himself. He knows how to peel off. When one of them picks up the ball from the from the from the uh, the goalkeeper, they know that the other one's just over there. But when you barely play together, like like Badi Shiro and Colwell, the relationships aren't there. And obviously, we know Colwell is a left is a left centre back. He played that right centre back as well. You know, he doesn't really offer that balance on that side. He was play he was trying to play some some crazy luxury passes in the first half, and most of them, some of them weren't working. Initially, they were, but they stopped working. He was forcing it too much. You know. So these are all things that they still need to learn because a lot of these centre-backs we've, we've got haven't played together. But at the same time, defensively, individually, they need to improve. The awareness needs to be better, a lot better. You know, and this is something that Maresco needs to work on because he actually came out again and spoke about the high line and said, listen, this, this line is too high. This, he basically, to me, reading between the lines of what he said, it basically sounded like what he was saying was, this is not what I'm telling them. But they're so used to playing in a high line from last season that they're, that their muscle, muscle memory is still going back to last year. But that's not how I want them to play. You know what I'm saying? If you are going to go high, you need to make sure that you're pressing high as well. And what they were doing, they were just going high and they were just letting Real Madrid have all this space. That's why they were able to just pick them out and play it in behind. You know what I mean? The defending wasn't good in that first half, you know? Jorgensen, you know, I thought he was quite assured in between the sticks in terms of his ball playing ability. I was seeing guys just fizzing it at him and he's just bringing it down, you know, playing passes, starting um, some good attacks as well, because on the ball, we were good in attack. But again, it's the execution. Sterling finding himself in good areas to shoot. He does it too late. He'll shoot straight into bodies. Finding good areas to, you know, create a chance. That was one, there was one pass that Gusto played to him through the lines. And um, he could have even taken a touch there or shot. But he'd done it so quick and Kuku wasn't ready for that chance. You know, just doing it for doing it, say, bro. You need to just take a little, a little pulser like what Cole Palmer does. Wait, and then just play it. It's always rush, rush, rush on that side with Sterling. And I'm like, bro, you're nearly 30, bro. Why are you still playing like a kid? I expect that from the likes of Madweki, not from you. You've got a lot of experience. You know what I'm saying? So he's, his final end product wasn't good because we're finding ourselves in good areas. And, that, and that's the thing that I like about Maresco already. I can see that the attacking patterns are good, right? We're finding our wingers in space. We're isolating the, the fullbacks, the opponents, the fullbacks. But it's very, very key that these guys on, on, on both wings have good end products. I thought Madweki started the game quite well. You know, he took his goal well. Very, very good ball, uh, good ball from Enzo Fernandez as well. But listen, <laughs> rest of the game, defensively, he weren't great. You know, he's kind of strolling around. You know, I, I noticed that the whole team, to be fair, looked looked like they were blowing. Like Lavia, what, Lavia has been amazing this preseason, but he was he was he was poor yesterday. To be fair, like off the ball, he was just jogging around. Reese, first few minutes, I could see that he was struggling with fitness as well. Um, obviously, he's been out for time, and it's what his fourth game in a row, which is mad. You know, um, a lot of them look tired, didn't it? And that's why I'm glad that they're back. They're back in the UK now. So let's not think that these guys are robots because at the end of the day, they still need to get their fitness. But there were still things in the game that I wasn't happy with. You know. That second goal, Badi Ashil, why are you just walking to the goal instead of trying to clear it? You're a tall brother. Go there with some urgency. Why are you so laxy-daisy? Why are you so, you know, nonchalant? That's what I'm saying. They must have some beanies watching them in the crowd or something. And they, hey, I'm, I look cool. Nah, bro, you don't look cool. You look stupid. You look stupid. You know what I'm saying? He's got to do better there. I saw a few people trying to uh, blame Jorgensen for that. But listen, it was a it was a nice ball from Vinicius. Yeah? And Jorgensen, he, he misjudged it. And to be fair to him, if he dives into something like that in preseason, he can just get himself injured. So he probably just thought, oh, you know what, it's preseason. Let me not do too much. You know what I'm trying to say? Because I've seen a lot of players, even for um, other clubs and that in preseason, they don't go all in all the time because they're, they're trying to maintain their fitness. Yeah, and, and, and leave the pitch healthy. You know what I'm trying to say? But overall, I thought he was quite assured on the ball. And this is what I was seeing with him when I was watching his games back with Jorgensen. Like, he's definitely better on the ball. And that's what I said. I said to these lot in the group chat, I said, yo, he'll definitely help us play better. But it's just his shot stopping where I'm not fully convinced. It's decent, but it's not Allison. It's not Valles or these sort of guys. Do you know what I mean? But I thought he was quite good in the ball as well. Um, who else was there? You know, just looking at overall, I think Gil was, you know, he was 
He was trying to link up play. Um, he had a chance in the second half as well. Poor finish. But again, we weren't really creating much for him. There weren't really much clear-cut chances that were, you know, that were being played through to him. I, re I haven't really seen him have a one-on-one -on -one as of yet. You know what I'm trying to say? So Nkuku needs to do better in that position in terms of his creativity. Um, you know, and then at, at the same time, Enzo, you know, he was playing some playing some nice passes there. So listen, it's good that we've got Palmer, Jackson, um, and Cucurella to come back in, into the team because for me, these guys, they all start, you know, and they all add something. They all bring something to the team. Do you know what I'm trying to say? So it's going to be good to see see them come back against um, against Inter Milan. But we need to see a lot of these mistakes rectified, man. At the back, we need to make sure that we see a lot a lot of these mistakes rectified against Inter Milan because the season is slowly creeping up on us. Yeah, next week it starts next week, you know. <laughs> and I actually managed to get myself a ticket to go to that game against Man City. I can't be seeing my team dropping points and losing games because at the back they're falling asleep, bro. Like Mr. Bean in, in Rat Race. You know, you know, if you know, if you know, you know, innit? You know what I mean? That's how guys are just falling asleep on the pitch. Do you know what I'm saying? But we need to go make sure that we go bring in a winger. Please go bring me a winger because I can't put all my eggs in one basket with Mudrick. You know? People think I love off Mudrick like I think he's going to be, you know, I, I think he's got a high potential. Yeah, but it's a player that I never wanted. I wanted Trossard at the time. You know? Everyone thought Mudrick was going, going to Arsenal. But at the end of the day, I, I like his raw attributes. I like his pace. I like his strength. I like his, you know, some games is he, he's quite skillful. His passing is very underrated as well. His link-up play is quite good. But he's very up and down. Very up and down. You know, and I do think Moresco will improve him. But it's still going to take time. So we need someone that's a little bit more guaranteed. That's why it was good that was going for Olise. Because on that left-hand side, yo, <laughs> it's all up for grabs. I would like to see Nkuku there. But at the end of the day, listen... <laughs> Maresca likes touchline wingers, so I highly doubt he's going to play him there. You know, Jackson could play there potentially as well. What does that mean? Does that mean that we're going to start on Morodian? Because we just got the here we go today. I hope Morodian proves me wrong because you lot know I don't want him. You know, I've said he's got a touch of a trampoline. You know, he don't look good. And at the minute, for me, I'd rather he stays in Spain and carry, carries on developing there. But I'll still support him because he's, he's, he's playing for my club. I hope he does well. But if he doesn't, I'm not even coming for him. I'm going to go for the sporting directors. Because as it is right now, I don't agree with that signing. I big them up on a lot of signings because, like I said, we've got some good scouts. But for this one here, I really don't get the obsession. I can see the raw attributes, but again, we're adding more potential to a team that missed a lot of big chances last year. Surely you want to you go get someone that's more assured, more experienced up there, you know? Hopefully we can sort something out of Ossiman. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, but at the end of the day, he's, he's experienced. He's a little bit more guaranteed. Some, I, I, I have more confidence in him because he's got, a, you know, he's again, he's been there, done it in, in various leagues and he clearly wants to move to Chelsea as well. So hopefully we can get that one done because they want Lukaku. So there's definitely a deal to be done there, you know, and hopefully we can bring in an attack, uh, a winger as well. Because that left-hand side, bro, <laughs> is peak. It's peak. You know what I'm saying? But like I said, people, for me, there's nothing really new that I learned from this game. It's just the same. Like I said, he's got us playing well in terms of the attack. In terms of on the ball, we know what we're doing on the ball. But off the ball, there's still work to be done. You know, still work to be done. I don't want to be seeing, you know, people defending that badly against Inter Milan, especially now we're back at the bridge. So there's no excuses of the pitch and all of these things. Because I know the pitches in America are shit. Yeah? There's no excuses of that. You're going to be playing on nice grass now. You know what I mean? But let me know your thoughts, like I said, people. Smash up the lights. Roll to 3K. And yeah, peace, man. Until the next one. Love.